to automatically record. This meeting is being there recorded. Go. There it goes. There you go. <laughs> That's there what I was looking for. Awesome. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so I won't go through everything, but we've already done the kickoff. We'll kick off the president's report, treasurer's followed by the treasurer's report, brief SLT. Uh, we'll go over uh, some new business, some of the updates that we had already shared with the agenda, principal's report, and then we'll adjourn. Uh, la agenda de noviembre, so ya hicimos la bienvenida. Informe del presidente, el informe del tesorero, uh, el informe del equipo liderazgo escolar. Hablaremos de los nuevos um, negocios, o sea, las cosas que tenemos en la agenda y el informe del director y luego concluimos la reunión. We can go to the next slide, Casey. Um, so the September general meeting minutes uh, were supposed to go be emailed out earlier today. Um, unfortunately, they were not um, unless they've shown up just in the last few minutes. So uh, I will put a link in the chat. Um, the video recording of the October meeting has been um, up on our YouTube channel, which you can access through the school's website at ps376.org um, forward slash PSA. Uh, the, e the, the minutes were, were emailed uh, 5.30 uh, tonight. Uh, los minutos de la reunión anterior de octubre fueron compartidas por uh, correo electrónico. Excuse me, pero si desean uh, acceder los minutos, también los tenemos disponibles en nuestro canal de YouTube y lo pueden acceder por el enlace de la escuela, de la página web de la escuela. Um, so any questions or concerns um, that you have about tonight or just sort of in general, if you can put those in the uh, chat also, those can be addressed at the end of the meeting, time permitting. If you have any questions specific to your child, please reach out to administration directly. And here are the email addresses for um, Ms. Perez Hernandez, Ms. Ramirez, and Ms. Rivera. Si tiene alguna pregunta o alguna inquietud, um, por favor le pedimos que lo, lo ingresen en el chat. Um, si tiene alguna pregunta que se refiere particular a su hijo, por favor le pedimos que comuníquese directamente con la administración de la escuela, ya que queremos... Um, permanecer su privacidad y aquí tenemos la información de la principal y la asistente principal, uh, Ms. Ramirez, igual que la coordinadora de padres. Y en el chat, uh, Ms. Perez, la principal, la directora acaba de compartir el correo electrónico de um, Ms. Haig. Ms. Haig's email is also in the chat. Okay. All right, so president's report, I will share that on behalf of Petrina um, since she wasn't able to join us today. El informe del presidente. I think we're going to go into the next slides, right? Sorry. Yes, so very exciting. Uh, our fall picture day will be taking place on Wednesday, November 30th. Um, we've selected a uh, photo company AM Photo. Uh, you may be able to pay for the, but we'll be sharing the information with uh, the packages uh, forthcoming, but uh, you'll be able to pay with, for the packages for the photos, cash or money order paid to AM photo by, we would ask for everyone to make their payments by Monday, uh, November 28th, so that we're able to sort through everything and make sure that we arrange um, what we need to arrange for actual picture day. Uh, El día de la foto uh, escolar es el miércoles 30 de noviembre. Se puede pagar por los paquetes uh, en efectivo o en giro postal, money order, para los que no uh, conocen así. Y será pagado a AM Photos antes del lunes 28 de noviembre. Uh, vamos a enviar los, los sobres con todos los detalles del paquete uh, en los siguientes días. Uh, in nuestra, oh, sorry, I got to switch back to English. <laughs> in our previous meeting, we voted, we, we discussed um, uh, an event that we'd like to have during the holiday season. So we've uh, decided for the kids, we're going to have a kids holiday sale uh, December 14th through the 16th. Um, we've partnered with an organization called P Fund Services. Uh, students will be able to shop um, during the school day, we'll work out the schedule it wouldn't be during instruction times payment for uh the shopping days will can be made through cash or through prepaid gift cards um 
and we we like need volunteers like many many volunteers to come help us um to make sure that this is successful and that our children have a very positive experience during the holiday sale so please if you are interested in supporting for the holiday sale um please let us know in the chat so that we can capture your information um, and we can follow up with more details on the specifics of um, how you can volunteer for this event. Um, en nuestra reunión anterior le compartimos los diferentes eventos que queríamos tener. Uno de esos eventos uh, era una venta uh, de los días festejados para los estudiantes y hemos decidido tener ese evento uh, del 14 de diciembre al 16 de diciembre con una organización que se llama Fund Services. Uh, los niños tendrán la oportunidad de um, ir a comprar uh, durante uh, sería el almuerzo eh, con la ayuda de sus padres. Pueden pagar con el dinero efectivo o a través de una tarjeta prepagada. Um, para poder realizar este evento necesitamos voluntarios um, para que tengan una experiencia positiva. Le pedimos que si están interesados en asistir en ese evento, que por favor nos dejen saber en el chat para capturar su información y comunicarnos con ustedes luego de cómo pueden asistirnos para ese evento. All right, uh, our movie night uh, is also scheduled for the week, um, that week in December. So Friday, December 16th at 5.30 p.m. we'll be hosting our winter movie night um, in um, the school's auditorium. The school does have, uh, the auditorium does have limited capacity, so it is limited to 273 people um, and to make it fun and engaging for the the students we're going to have the students vote for um move on the movie that they'd like to uh watch or have a uh, stream that day so i think casey if you click one more time we'll, we'll get the suggestions while i say it in spanish uh to make it like like fun and engaging engaging uh in diciembre también tendremos nuestra noche de cine Sería el viernes 16 de diciembre a las 5 y media pm. Uh, la capacidad es limitada ya que la, uh, la, el evento sería en el auditorio de la escuela. Solamente tiene capacidad de 273 personas. Uh, y para uh, involucrar a los niños, los niños tendrán la oportunidad de votar entre dos películas. Uh, so we're going to ask um, all of you here today if you want to make your suggestions to put your G-rated movie suggestions in the comments so that we can start to collect that and then um, have um, kind of have narrow it down and, and then the children can vote on that as well. Le pedimos que pongan sus sugerencias de las películas clasificadas G en los comentarios y luego um, podemos organizar para que los niños puedan votar y elegir que, cuál película quieren ver. We also need volunteers for this too. All the events require volunteers, so let us know um, necesitamos voluntarios también para este evento. Um, and I meant to say this earlier regarding the limited capacity. Um, it is first come, first serve. So once we hit capacity, um, then unfortunately that will be to the point where hopefully, at least when I've participated, it hasn't been the case that we've had to turn anyone away, but we do want to be transparent about that. Um, Dado la, por la limitación en capacidad, um, si llegamos al punto de capacidad, entonces sí tendremos que cerrar la puerta y no podrán entrar. En mi experiencia, no, así, no hemos tenido una situación donde eso ha sucedido, pero sí queremos ser um, honestos y dejarles saber que es el que llegue primero, entra primero. Okay. Any questions? Just one thing real quick. We mentioned last month, if you are interested in volunteering for any of the events, please email us at um, PSA at PS376.com um, with the subject line event. Um, and we will put you on a list and reach out. Um, and if in the body of the email, you just put which event you're interested in or how you can volunteer or you know what skills you want to bring to the table, we would very much appreciate it. All right, uh, that's been added to the <clears throat> to the chat. Si quieren participar o ser voluntario para uno del evento, por favor, si no lo ponen en el chat, manden un um, correo electrónico a nuestra cuenta psa arroba, let me just see it ps tres setenta y seis punto com. Right? Did I get it? Is it com? Yes.
All right. right. Mary Louise, take it away. <laughs> okay. Um, moving right along here. Uh, so, you know, we uh, collected member, member dues this month, which proved to be rather fruitful. And we really appreciate all your uh, contributions because that's going to help us get, get going through this uh, movie night and um, just, just get the year rolling. Uh, so we really, really do appreciate all the donations that were made. Um, do you want to go to the next slide? Oh, sorry. There we go. Uh, and we far exceeded our goal. Our goal was a thousand dollars, and we raised one thousand seven hundred thirty-one dollars and seventy-five cents. So once again, thank you so much, everyone who donated. Um, and I wanted to add that, and I think we do have a reminder about this later. But we do have a fundraising committee. The meeting is on Tuesday next week um, at six o'clock. So if you are interested in in uh, volunteering for events, that is a good thing to come to that too, because we kind of talk about that kind of stuff there too. Um, and, you know, it's not only a place where we talk about fundraising, it's also about like what we do with the money. Um, so, you know, if you know of any programs or um, grants that you'd like us to apply for that you could help us with applying for, like that's what we talk about in the fundraising committee meeting. So it would be wonderful if you guys can attend. Um, I'll put the uh, the link to register to that and to enter that meeting in the chat in a few minutes. Um, <clears throat> okay, next slide. Nope. Uh, Don't what? forget to Spanish. <laughs> oh, right. Sorry. That's okay. All good. Um, I also have to remind myself. Um, este mes uh, mandamos una notificación para re, uh, las donaciones de membresía y hemos excedido nuestra meta de mil dólares. Actualmente hemos reunido mil setecientos dólares con setenta centavos y ese dinero se utilizará para los eventos que hemos mencionado y para tener más eventos. Um, un recordatorio que los martes o este martes que sigue es la reunión de la, del comité de recaudar fondos. Si está interesado en asistir o a proveer sus ideas de cómo podemos recaudar más fondos, ya sea de diferentes negocios. Um, I don't remember, I don't know how to say grants, but uh, por favor asista a esa reunión el martes. Creo que pusieron el enlace, el enlace. Or will you put the link in the chat? Ok, um, vamos a compartir el enlace para, uh, reunir, para registrarse para asistir a esa reunión los martes. Okay, now we're good. Okay, uh, so this month, our bank account balance started out at, you know what? Oh, I don't have the starting, but wait, this isn't right. Okay, well, yeah, yeah, our bank account balance is $7,197.70, thanks to all the contributions. We do um, still owe a lot of people graduation picture refunds from during the pandemic. Uh, a lot of people paid for pictures and then the pandemic happened and we didn't get to take pictures. So if you do know any students who are in, are they in eighth grade now? Yes. I think they're in eighth grade now in eighth grade in surrounding schools that possibly might not have gotten their uh, refund, please send them our way because we would love to give them their money back. Um, we do have to earmark this for two more years before we're able to just kind of forget about it, but we would like to give everyone their money back if, uh, if we can find them. Um, but anyway, so that taken out of the, the, balance, the bank account balance plus our Open collective balance, which is $523.76. It has not grown yet. Um, we have $6,500.51 available. Uh, and just a refresher, if you don't know what Open Collective is, it's actually our fiscal sponsor that makes it so that we can basically receive tax deductible funds. Uh, so if, say, we did want to sponsor a big, pro some sort of program, and we could find a uh, you know, a company or something that wanted to donate several hundred dollars, it's a good place for them to donate mm -hmm. because then they can write it off basically on their taxes um, and companies like that. So um, that is what Open Collective is. And if you or you know someone who would want to make a tax deductible contribution to the school, you could do it through Open Collective. Um, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> Brevemente, el informe del presupuesto bancario. Actualmente tenemos en el banco 
197 dólares con 70 centavos. Um, hay que, uh, te, todavía tenemos lo, el, la cantidad de 1,326 dólares con 95 centavos que es para la, el reembolso de las fotos del 2020, del 2020 um, cuando pasó la pandemia que uh, uh, colectamos dinero para tomar las fotos, pero no pudimos. Entonces, si conoce alguna familia uh, que estuvo en la escuela 376 en el quinto grado en el 2020, uh, por favor, hágale saber que queremos regresarle ese dinero. Todavía tenemos que esperar dos años más para tratar de uh, devolver el dinero. Luego po, creo que podemos utilizar el dinero. También tenemos 523 dólares con nuestra asociación de Open Collective. Um, que es una entidad patrocinadora que es, uh, no, no da la oportunidad de registrarlo como 501c3, eh, que le permite a diferentes negocios y compañías aceptar do donaciones, donaciones que son deducibles de los impuestos. Si conocen alguna compañía o están interesados, por favor, lo pueden dirigir a esa cuenta. Entonces, actualmente tenemos 6,000 500 dólares con 51 centavos disponible en nuestra cuenta. Keep the suggestions coming. I love it. All the movie suggestions are coming through. Um, okay. So at this time, since we have all this fabulous money, not really. <laughs> um, so I wanted to make a motion to uh, request $300 for what we're calling our school spirit committee um, for decorations and supplies to promote school, school spirits within our community. Um, so essentially this would be on the days that are dress down days. So if you recall in October, we had our fabulous door decoration that was brought to you by an amazing cohort of parent volunteers that um, dedicated their time to decorate. So we wanted to set aside some funds or I am making the motion for to set aside some funds for us to purchase decorative items to continue those efforts to just make the school fun and pretty during these events. I second the motion. Okay. Which so, means now we vote. I was gonna say, <laughs> so at this time we, have to, we would vote on, on whether we'd like to move forward with this motion. Give me two seconds and I will have a poll. All right. We need some music while we wait. <laughs> That's all right. Go ahead, Can please. I sing to us right now? <laughs> I was like, no, I'm trying to spare you all. I can't sing. <laughs> so while um, Casey uh, pulls the poll together, I'm going to look in the chat and look at the suggestions. I'm a fan of all of the rated G movies, so I'm just like excited to see all of them. <laughs> and we'll make note. Okay. Andre, Anna, can you um, translate this just because I'll give- Oh Lord, yes, sorry. Y'all gotta remind me. Okay, I'm, I'm, doing, a I'm doing double duty here. Um, Okay. Yeah. Hold on. I just one more second. Yeah. I didn't realize that we were doing this as a poll. So no, I'm I'll translate the motion because I just said it all in English, but I didn't. So while you do that. Um uh quisiera hacer una I said mo una motion para para separar 300 dólares para decoraciones y uh, para decorar la escuela durante los días que tenemos um Celebraciones, como notaron en octubre, uh, un grupo de voluntarios donaron de su tiempo y de sus habilidades y decoramos la puerta de la escuela con nuestra muñeca bonita, uh, rosada. Entonces queremos seguir esa, esa, el espíritu de la escuela y decorar en, en todos esos um, eventos. Entonces estamos, bueno, hice una moción de utilizar o pedir 300 dólares de nuestro saldo actual para poder comprar diferentes um, decoraciones para seguir decorando durante estos días para el año completo. And we are supposed to open up the floor to discuss, uh, and someone actually has a question in the chat, which is, she says the decorations at the school gate were great, but they get thrown away almost immediately. Can they be reused inside the school? 
So absolutely, I think that was the idea behind um, create like formalizing this um, that now it would be more structured. So that this was more of like a. I do think we saved the tool, Ms. Perez. I think uh, we saved it because we can use it. So that's the other part of like the idea is to buy things that are not just one time use. So if you look at the photos that we have here, they're they're kind of small. Um, things like the thing, the what is it, the balloon inflator machine, like the columns. These are things that can be reused. The the door decor, we did use fabric, so that stuff is reusable. Um, so hopefully we can buy things that can that have multi use, and that we can repurpose. Um, I think I think unfortunately the weather wasn't on our side with the the doll that we had at the door because. If it were up to us, we would keep it up much longer, but that's also part of the school spirit committee to allow us to plan so that when we do put in the effort to decorate and put things up, uh, we could do it with time and everybody gets to enjoy it for a longer period of time. Um, so I, I totally support that suggestion. Yes, floor, I saw, sorry, I'll read it. Are the parents allowed to donate decorations? Maybe it will be helpful so many uh, more money can go to the aunt. Yes. So actually, I neglected to mention that. If you do have things like balloons, supplies, please do um, donate them. I think the idea is, again, to, to for it to be celebratory. So absolutely. Um, was there one that I skipped? Just to jump in here, um, another idea that we have floated in meetings for, uh, previous to this is a subcommittee for events. Um, and we could also do like a decoration school spirit subcommittee where um, these are all such great ideas. And if with more planning, we could potentially uh, have, you know, like more direction, be more uh, conscientious and conserve more of our supplies so that we have like a plan going forward. Like this is what we're doing for this week. This is what we're doing for wear orange. This is what we're doing for pajama day, that type of thing. So again, if you are interested in helping with any of these things, please email us with the subject line events. Um, just quickly, um, hay varias preguntas en el chat uh, y sugerencias. Um, el propósito en realidad es de tratar de comprar o, o tener cosas que son, se pueden usar más de una vez. Y si tiene alguna decoración o algo que quisiera donar, Por favor, lo aceptamos. The more the merrier. Um, Viviana, I saw you have your hand up. Yeah, good question. Would we be able to donate, like for example, like Amazon gift cards to you guys so you guys could just purchase what is needed? I'm going to defer to Mary Louise. I don't see why not, but I don't know. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, it's just like giving a, um, a gift to anyone. Yeah, you, you could donate them. Yeah. You prefer to do it that way yeah just so that it doesn't come out at all like any money from you guys like it would just go directly to be used um sure i mean it's all it's all the same thing though you know i mean if you're donating money you're donating money and it's all like whether you you send it as a gift card or you send it as cash like it's still all kind of coming from the same pot i guess um you know i mean we do have this is why we raise money partially is is to be able to do you know to decorate and like to make the school look more fun and um to do fun events so that is part of the reason why we fundraise so you know it's not like it's taking that much out of the pot um but if you also yeah. have like a better idea of how to spend the money you should come to the fundraising meeting on tuesday because that's really like where we'll more about that kind of stuff okay are we ready to vote i am launching the poll now the poll is live so we'll give it what do you think one minute okay Lanzamos la encuesta. La pregunta dice si está de acuerdo con utilizar los 300 para. What, are, what is the school spirit? I got to think fast. <laughs> I'm like, I can't think. I don't want to say promover el espíritu de la escuela because that sounds more religious. It's not religious, but it's more like. Um... School happiness. Can you put maybe that? 
Or, seconds for orgullo me. escolar, maybe? Yes, that. Uh, sí, uh, uh, promover orgullo escolar. La primera es de acuerdo. Segunda, no está de acuerdo. Tercera, uh, no quiero responder. Sorry, I was like, I gotta do it quick. It's 20 seconds. Okay. <laughs> Three seconds. And that's one minute. So we are closing the poll. Um, and with uh, 15 respondents, 14 agree. Um, there are zero respondents who disagree. I'm sharing the results. Um, and one declined to answer. All right. So with 93%, that moves right. That means we are passing the motion. And by the way, if we end up not spending this money, that's okay. You know, we 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 aren't going to just like we don't have to spend the three hundred dollars. You know, if you, there are donations and we find we don't need to spend it, great. But we're just we just have this now earmarked. In, right, in we're just going to earmark it, and then yeah. yeah. The goal is always going to be if we can be under and use it obviously for something else, we will. But we always want to plan accordingly. Um, Viviana, you saw, is that your hand still up from before or you had another question? Nope, that's from before. I don't know how to stop it from being up. Oh, I think, hold on. I think if you press the hand again, it'll go down. I just want to make sure we're not disregarding um, our question. Okay. I think okay, we're, I'm off. thank you everybody. And I'm sorry. And for the donations for like the decorations, we would drop, just drop them off at the PSA office. Yes, we actually are going to have a little ma a mailbox on the wall. Um, Next week, it needs to be installed, but there's a, there will be a mailbox right when you walk in the door to the right, um, and you could put them in there, and it's locked, so it's secure. That is if you are donating like money or gift cards. If you are donating physical items, like you have balloons or oh. streamers or whatever, <laughs> if you could bring them to our new office hours, which we'll be mentioning later, but basically it's Tuesday, 8.30 to 10.30, so Tuesday mornings, or Thursday afternoons, 4.30 to 5.30. Um, those were when uh, one of us will be in the office on a regular basis. And if also, you can't I take think, those, you can just leave them at the PSA room. I mean, yeah. we'll, we'll get them and send us, shoot us an email so we know they're there. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Are we good to move on? Yes. Oh, yes. SLT report. So you'll have to forgive me because this will be a brief uh, report um, just because my memory uh, is a little short. So I might ask uh, a few others to jump in if I forgot something. But during our previous SLT meeting, we actually spent the, well, the first part of the our meeting, we were voting on the uniform policy, which we will revisit in the next SLT meeting. Um, because we had a bit of a split vote. If you recall during the parent survey last, when we first started, I think it was last month, one of the questions we asked were for your input on the school's uniform policy, uh, based on the amount of people that responded to the survey, uh, majority responded yes, that they were in alignment with the uh, uniform policy. Um, so myself and Petrina voted in alignment with that. However, we will have a subsequent discussion in the next meeting because we didn't have um, a unanimous vote uh, for unif uniform policy. The vote was actually, it wasn't an evenly split, but it was split. So we're gonna revisit that topic um, and we'll have an update on that for the next meeting. Um, but we also had each of the representatives of the, for our CEP committees, um, the consolidated education plan present the action plan for each of their sections. So uh, it was uh, Ms. Haig presented her action plan for ELA, um, essentially how we will meet our ELA goal for the year. Goals for the year. I don't remember the percentages off the top of my head of where how much of an improvement we're trying to make from last year. I think it's a three percent improvement, but I don't remember the exact percentages. So forgive me. Uh, for our next meeting, I'll have more detail on that. Uh, we had Ms. Ramirez, I think, presented for math. Um, the math goals, again, the action plan for how we are going to achieve our goals um, under math. And then Ms. Rivera, our parent coordinator, presented um, the action plan for achieving our parent engagement goals under the parent survey subcommittee. 
Um, so it's very important that everyone complete the parent, the official parent survey that goes out, including, I think we just sent out, the school just sent out a parent survey to share um, your feedback on that. Um, also uh, for SLT, everyone is welcome to listen in um, to hear what is covered during SLT, especially since it's related to um, the school's uh, academic goals and our children. Okay. I'll do the abbreviated version, a lot of talking. Um, en la reunión del equipo de liderazgo escolar que sucedió el mes pasado, uh, en, uh, cubrimos, uh, votamos uh, en el tema relacionado con la póliza de la escuela del uniforme. Actualmente vamos a revisar esa, esa votación, ya que uh, no estuvimos de acuerdo en la reunión anterior. Entonces vamos a revisar eso en la reunión que sigue en este mes. I think it's, uh, our meeting is on Monday, right? The 14th. Uh, el lunes vamos a revisitar ese tema del uniforme um, también cada uh, cubrimos el tema que está en el plan educativo de la escuela escolar uh, de, en cada área el primero en um, matemáticas literatura y parent engagement why can I say this I've said this word every time uh, <laughs> I was like I'm, there's a lot of talking um, y relacionado con la con la participación de los padres. Entonces, uh, Ms. Hay presentó las metas um, para cómo vamos a, a subir lo, los, los grados o la participación, la, la, what is the word I'm looking for? Uh, vamos a cumplir las metas relacionadas con la, uh, la lectura, con ELA. Uh, Ms. Ramírez presentó para las matemáticas las metas y la, el, la, el plan de acción. That was the word de cómo vamos a, a cumplir la meta sobre esos dos temas, literatura y matemática. Y Ms. Rivera, nuestra coordinadora de padres, presentó el uh, plan de acción de cómo vamos a, a, a mejorar la participación de los padres. Entonces, muy importante que uh, completen los, las encuestas que se envían de la escuela para que puedan compartir su opinión y también uh, compartir cómo podemos seguir um, in, uh, mejorando la participación de los padres. Okay, that was a lot. I was like, I can't remember all my words. <laughs> all right, we're ready to go on to the next thing. I think I got it. Okay, now new business. Yay, the fun stuff. All right. So wait, who's, oh, Casey. So this was some, so I would like to um, make a proposal to the floor that we, I know we just voted on this in our very first meeting to it, but I would like to propose that we amend the bylaws yet again so that we can have hybrid membership meetings. When we initially voted on this, um, I, I personally did not realize how many very dedicated uh, parent volunteers we have in the school um, that are there on a very almost daily basis um, but they do not participate in these meetings because they are exclusively online. And so um, by having strictly Zoom meetings, we are excluding a very valuable part of our parent community. Um, so I, for one, would like to see the meetings be hybrid. So we would meet simultaneously um, at the school and then also have the same uh, Zoom format here. So you guys would see, if you um, can't make it in person, you would still be able to log in on Zoom, same meeting link, nothing would change for you. But for the people who are not participating, it would once again give them a chance after a two year absence um, so that they could fully participate in the PSA. Okay, I second that motion and I will translate. <laughs> Um, ok, um, Casey acaba de um, a, a presentar una moción que queríamos uh, para, que, para votación. Uh, sabemos que hablamos de este tema en, la, en el inicio del año, del, de la, del formato de la reunión, pero tenemos, hay una gran parte de nuestra comunidad que no participa en nuestras reuniones porque se toma en este, en este formato por Zoom. Entonces nosotros queremos incluirlos a todos. Entonces tenemos una moción para hacer que todas las reuniones mensuales sean híbridas. So, se tomarán a cabo en persona en la escuela y por esta forma en Zoom. Entonces uh, queremos votar ahora o, con esa propuesta ya que Casey la, la presentó y yo la estoy de acuerdo. Vamos a votar o a lanzar una, um, una encuesta para ver si, cómo, si están de acuerdo o no de acuerdo. 
Okay, that was the end of the translation. <laughs> um, do we open this to discussion then, Mary Louise? Yes. Does anyone have any thing to say? Preguntas, comentarios, sugerencias antes de lanzar la encuesta. Okay. Well, there's no discussion, so we can vote. <laughs> I'm now going to launch the poll um, for one minute. The poll is now live. So 25 seconds, more or less, remaining. OK, 25 segundos, más o menos. Por favor, responda la encuesta. 10 seconds. Uh, someone is not seeing the poll. Um. Um. Betsy, you can um, message Casey privately with your vote. Okay, so I'm going to now end the poll and I will look for Betsy's message. Mm -hmm. Her name is D32, 32K376 if you're looking for, if you want to switch to just a private message. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry, I should have said that. <laughs> Um, so with, uh, 26 respondents, uh, I'm sorry, 21 of the 26, um, participants responded. So we've had 21 respondents, uh, 17 of them of the 21 agree that the monthly meeting shall be hybrid. Two of the 21, I'm sorry, I will share this so you can have a visual. Um, two of the 21 disagree and two of the 21 decline to answer. Um, so with that, the motion passes. Okay. El 81% de, la de, los de las personas que respondieron están de acuerdo. Y con eso pasamos la, prop la, prop la propuesta. Las reuniones serán híbridas. La próxima reunión será el 8 de diciembre, híbrida. So, our first hybrid meeting is going to be December 8th. The date and time is the same. Uh, so, it'll still be the second Thursday at 6 p.m. Todavía será el segundo jueves a las 6. Um, please arrive by 5.50 to allow you to sign in and come in and get settled. Por favor, lleguen a las 5 y 50, lo más tardar para que se puedan uh, registrar y se puedan sentar. And if you come in person, there might be snacks. Just saying. <laughs> I have a question. I'm sorry. I can't, I don't know. I can't find the hand raised thing. Um, for, since it's um, parent staff association, are more teachers going to participate in the meetings? The teachers are always welcome to participate. They, um, you know, our meeting dates are publicly made available and perhaps they will because they will be in the building. So that would be great. You know, more, more the merrier. We, so because we have to amend the bylaws, um, I'm not sure if this was included or not, but uh, we will have to have another meeting to amend the bylaws officially which I think we are planning on doing on Tuesday before the fundraising committee meeting. Is that still the plan? That yes. The plan. Okay, we'll send a, a flyer out on um, on Monday, I guess, uh, about that, because it's an it'll be an emergency special meeting and it'll be happening um, right before the fundraising committee meeting. We'll just use the same link. 
also um as far as like an emergency special meeting it is literally voting do you agree to like this is what the um change looks like in the bylaws which is literally changing two words and then um you know do you agree to that so it will be very very short once we all get there we just need eight people so call your friends and then it will move forward it's very important okay and you can stay for the fundraising committee meeting though just saying <laughs> it's also very important it's also very important especially if you're interested in like bringing more programs and events to the school <laughs> right moving right along all right so communication so I was going to display a fabulous folder. However, I didn't get home on time to go pick it up. But coming soon, uh, we will be uh, distributing uh, or your child will bring home a fabulous black folder um, that is intended to be for communication purposes. So stay tuned for that. Um, it's nice and sturdy. Um, it's like the nice vinyl, uh, vinyl, right? It's vinyl material. And we've had our amazing volunteers um, put them together and those will be going out soon. So stay tuned. Also, please be sure to set up your child's New York City Schools account. Um, that account is super important. Not only does it allow you to access your student's record, their child's records, but um, it's basically the account that follows them throughout their entire um, academic life in um, the Department of Education. There's abundance of information once you've created that. And also the official uh, com parent communication platform um, through the DOE, you must have a, 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 school, a school's account in order for you to receive the communication that is coming from the school. So if you have not created that, um, you should have received a letter, um, actually a packet with the letter that has your code um, for you to uh, set up the account, as well as a packet that has a um, step-by-step guide on how to create your account. I see there's some um, questions. I'll come. I'll get to the questions in a moment. Let me just uh, say this in Spanish really briefly. Uh, próximamente uh, estaremos enviando. Bueno, sus niños o los estudiantes estarán uh, recibiendo una carpeta negra de que es para comunicación. Es uh, un poquito más fuerte uh, de que los. What is it? The carpet, la carpeta que tiene actualmente. Entonces eso será. Uh, vamos a empezar a distribuirlo. Bueno, la semana que entra, entonces uh, estén atentos de eso, de la carpeta que va a tener, es, es para recibir todos los, los folletos y los anuncios que se mandan de la escuela. Um, un poquito más durable que la, 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 la carpeta de papel para que no se rompan. Um, también asegúrense de configurar su cuenta escolar de la ciudad de Nueva York para su estudiante. Uh, esa cuenta es la cuenta oficial del Departamento de Educación y se necesita... Uh, tiene los récords de su uh, estudiante y tiene mucha información disponible ahí. ahí. Uh, eso también, si no tiene esa cuenta, no recibirá las comunicaciones oficial de la escuela, ya que la escuela tiene uh, una plataforma oficial de comunicación con los padres. Uh, la escuela ha enviado una carta y un, um, y un folleto de cómo activar su cuenta. Necesita un código para poder iniciar su cuenta. Si no tiene ese código, puede comunicarse con la escuela um, para poder recibir ese, ese código para iniciar su cuenta. Uh, OK, let me look at the chat really quick. Have we addressed all the questions? I'm going to move on to the next slide just because the DOE has gone ahead and created um, this big tutorial on how to set up your Nixa account. I have dropped the link to this tutorial in the chat, so if you want to um, if you have, if you don't have a Nixa account and you haven't received a letter, your letter is forthcoming. Uh, mm -hmm. Apparently, they're kind of time intensive to sort of compile all the information. So, if you want to be proactive and you know try to get it set up on your own, uh, the DOE provides this tutorial. So, this is a screenshot of it, but the active link is in the chat. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's because every parent has a unique code that is assigned to them in order to activate the account. Um, so you do need the code in order to activate the account. Um, so stay tuned for that. And if you haven't, I would say, uh, I guess, maybe give it another couple of days for you to receive the letter. And then if not, you can um, reach out to Ms. Rivera, our parent coordinator, for your code. 
you can you can also stop into PSA office hours um, if you need help setting up your uh, Nixa account. Because yeah. uh, we're part, uh, I spoke with Ms. Rivera today and we're partnering with her to help people who might not um, be as, you know, experienced navigating the DOE website, which, you know, it's yeah. a lot. Uh, si necesita asistencia para iniciar su cuenta, también puede pasar por la oficina de la PSA en los horarios que le vamos a compartir para poder um, asistirle directamente para iniciar su cuenta. I just wanted to add because we're talking about communication. Um, someone asked in the chat about parent, the parent representatives um, for the classrooms. Uh, that initiative is being headed up by Stacy Johnson, who is our Title I PAC chair. She's not able to be here tonight, but she does have everyone's email addresses that expressed interest. And if you wrote it on the sub survey, um, and she will be contacting you in the next week or so. Uh, and if you are interested in being your class rep, um, you can, and you didn't tell us in the survey, you can always email us at PSA at ps376.com and uh, we, we will give your name over to her because she'll be organizing everybody. Uh, Tiffany, is that a new hand up or was that from before? Uh, it's a new hand. Okay. <laughs> Um, okay, just really quickly. Um, I don't know if um, you guys are aware of the parents, but um, I had a, I had a little issue. So I'm sure there's other parents that might have had the same thing that didn't notice. But if you look on your DOE's, um, your child school report card, if your child is late, um, they mark them absent after a certain time. So you have to make sure that your absences are correct. And it's not that they were really just late and not absent because I had double <laughs> double the absences and double the like lateness. So they've corrected it. If you call the school, I just wanted to make everyone aware of that. So after 810, they mark them as late. I mean, as absent. So if your child was late after that, they, they consider them absent. So sometimes it doesn't always get updated. So just to make you guys aware. And then the other thing I wanted to say was um, for oh if you guys saw the thing about the dances and is would that be a part of the fundraiser meeting to discuss more about that yeah that was the chat right in the chat the suggestion yes yes so sorry yes so uh in the fundraising committee uh meeting um you can discuss how we will utilize the funds going forward but also even in this meeting, when you when things are placed in the chat, we're collecting the suggestions and then we put it forth to the floor to vote. Okay, thank you. Um, and well, I think- The idea about the dances came up um, at last month's meeting and we had sort of said that uh, we would definitely be talking about that and considering <laughs> that for um, like winter of 2023. So like, you know, right after we get back from Christmas break, that might be another, um, a uh, fundraiser that we would be putting forth to the general constituency to see if um, everybody's on board with that. And then we would vote in the same meeting. But yes, please come to the fundraising meeting if that is your, an interest. I feel like it should be called fundraising and events committee. <laughs> it should just be. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so just so we're clear, the fundraising committee is essentially how we manage and do use the funds. It sounds, whenever we attach committee to it, it makes it feel a lot more than what it is, but it's intended to be participatory and community involvement of how we will make our school year fun and enjoyable for our children and ourselves. Um, I would like to make a motion that we just call it the fun committee. Just abbreviate it to fun because <laughs> it's events, and money and those things go hand in hand on how we get stuff done. So volunteers, money. Fundraising and underscore fund committee. There we go. Um, okay. So I think I'm not sure what's next, but um, uh, Tiffany, I'm going to, when we transition to the principal's report, I will defer to Ms. Perez on answering the question regarding how attendance is taken, but we heard, um, we noted, so we'll uh, address that shortly. And then um, we mentioned earlier our PSA office hours. So Tuesday morning, 8.30 to 10.30, Casey will be available to assist um, during those hours. Um, and on Thursday from 4.30 to 5.30, um, I will be available to assist um, 
as well. Uh, if you, I guess I should say it in Spanish, but el horario de oficina, entonces, uh, los martes de ocho y media, a diez y media, o diez treinta de la mañana, Casey estará disponible en la oficina, so pueden um, pasar por la oficina si necesitan asistencia o si necesitan um, cualquier asunto relacionado con la asociación de padres. Um, y los jueves de 4 y 30 a 5 y 30, yo estaré disponible um, en la oficina por la tarde. Uh, si necesita asistencia o algo en español, entonces les recomendamos que pasen en el horario de la tarde para yo poder asistirle con eso. Phew. All right, lots of talking, guys. <laughs> and then um was there a qu okay um this is just a recap we kind of already talked about so um today. yes uh this is just a quick recap of everything we've said so it's nicely in one page so fundraising committee is on tuesday uh picture day uh wednesday november 30th uh please uh submit your payment via cash or money order before monday so that we can organize and get everything set up um Next meeting for our, our PSA meeting is December 8th, hopefully hybrid, because we're all going to pass this motion. Our holiday shop is December 14th through the 16th. Movie night will be Friday, uh, December 16th. I believe that day will also be pajama day for the students. So it'll be a nice, fun segue for, from pajama day into a nice, fun movie um, in the school. And then currently, uh, book fair is taking place from Monday, I'm um, sorry, November 9th through November, I think it's the 15th. Uh, 15th or the 16th and there's no school the 24th November 24th and 25th um, brevemente los recordatorios todo lo que hemos mencionado en la reunión a uh, la reunión de, de, de recaudar de fondos es el martes a las 6 en zoom el día de las fotos es el 30, 30 de noviembre por favor remita sus pagos antes del lunes 28 de noviembre Nuestra próxima reunión en diciembre será el 8 de diciembre a las 6, uh, probablemente híbrido cuando pasemos la propuesta el martes. Uh, la venta de días festejados sería, será el 14 de diciembre al 16. La noche de cine es el 16 de diciembre. Uh, ese día también um, es el día de pajamas en la escuela. So, es, sería naturalmente la, para ver la película y los recordatorios a uh, la feria de, lib de libro es el 9 de noviembre al 16 de noviembre está sucediendo ahora mismo actualmente um, y no hay clases el 24 y el 25 de noviembre. Ok, so eso concluye nuestra parte. Le vamos a pasar ahora la reunión a nuestra, a nuestra directora escolar. Oh, I just kept going in Spanish. That concludes our reminders. Um, we're going to hand it over to um, Ms. Perez Hernandez for the principal's report. Thank you very much. I hope everyone is having a wonderful evening um, this evening. Buenas noches. Uh, espero que todo el mundo está teniendo una buena uh, noche esta noche. Muchas gracias por estar presente. Thank you very much for being present. Um, I would like to begin my principal's report with uh, first thanking all of our parent volunteers who helped us and supported us during our PSD 76 Fall Festival. It was a phenomenal event. Our children had so much fun that day um, engaging in the various activities, um, as did our teachers. And we really would not have been able to cater to the children as much as we were able to had it not been for um, all of the parent volunteers. So I'd really, really like to thank um, Ms. Magdalena Carillo, Ms. Jessica Gonzalez, Ms. Casey Fisher Bear, Ms. Kate Tellers, Ms. Karen Miller, Ms. Evelyn Flores, Ms. Rosa Cruz, Ms. Maria Carillo, uh, Ms. Bibiana Rodriguez, and Ms. Anna Oppenheimer um, for just helping us throughout the day. Uh, we truly, truly appreciate it. And it really helped make this event such a wonderful experience for our children um, and our families. So thank you very much. Okay, and I just wanted to give a quick update at this point in time. Um, we have commenced our after school STEAM enrichment programs. Um, as you can see, there's some of the flyers up on the screen. Uh, we will have a flower, a flyer coming out shortly um, that will be for theater. So if they're still, you know, your child still maybe did not want to participate in any one of the other um, enrichment activities, uh, there will be one more opportunity with our theater program that they can uh, participate in. Um, we also uh, have pretty much finalized the club 
um, applications and students should have heard back by now of which club they will be in and those have uh, pretty much commenced as well. Uh, there will also be um, a theater or street art um, club that will also be taking place with um, Ms. Grant. So those are just the final two um, that will be coming out and that will be available to children. And um, we're very excited. <laughs> Our children were very excited. Um, and uh, we just hope that, you know, this expands our enrichment offerings. Um, it is a, was a significant increase from the previous year. Um, so we're just really happy that we're, we are able to support this um, for our students. Um, and it is only uh, three through five. Um, yes, after school applications were given to all parents via email and they were backpacked and given to all students as well. Um, and we had multiple uh, parent email blasts that went out with the applications and the flyers for both clubs and after school. So that's an update on our enrichment program. And I also would just like to make note that our Hispanic Heritage Assembly was rescheduled from this week to next Wednesday, November 16th, uh, per parent feedback. We had several parents that felt that it would be a real, it would enrich the experience more if we had a like potluck dinner where um, various parents could contribute a dish from the Hispanic country that they're from. Um, I guess like most cultures, uh, Hispanic culture is very connected to food and um, sharing, celebrating through food. So we thought it was a great idea. We do respond to parent feedback and take that in. So being that it was um, several parents that made the suggestion, we decided to um, reschedule the event for this week to be able to send something out and give parents an opportunity to be able to prepare a dish if they would like to. It's totally voluntary, no expectation that anyone does submit anything, but if anyone would like to, um, it is an opportunity where they can do so. Um, our auditorium, unfortunately, and our cafeteria ha do have limited capacity. So we are at the 273 mark. Um, and that includes the children and staff members that will be here for the show. So it will be on a first come, first served basis. Um, so, you know, hope you are able to take part in our uh, Hispanic Heritage Dinner and Assembly. But I just wanted to make sure that I kind of brought that up and made sure that everyone was aware. There was a Google form for parents to fill out for any family that would like to donate a dish. May I ask a question? Hi, hi, this is a parent. Can I ask you a question about this assembly? Uh, sure. yeah. I don't know who's. Hi, it's Kelly Thomas. I'm, I'm a parent of a first grader and I'm not familiar with the assembly. Could you describe are the students performing and are, is like the nine o'clock different from the six o'clock? Can you just give us any kind of information about it? Sure, so um, certain classes are um, performing. I think the back, of the flyer had the classes that um, were performing in the show. And so not every single student is performing in the Hispanic Heritage Assembly, if that's what the question um, is, is about. And there is not a difference between both shows. The only difference would be that the six o'clock showing would also have the, um, the dinner uh, portion of it. There won't be like a breakfast for the nine o'clock showing. It will purely be the show. Thank you. Does that answer your question? Uh, mostly. I clearly need to go find that flyer with clarification of which class is performing. <laughs> but one one oh four is the class. I don't believe one one oh four is one of the classes performing. I think two two oh four is. I'm I'm one oh two. Oh I'm uh, sorry. Is that does it make a difference? <laughs> I think it was K-12 and 2204, but we'll we'll find okay. the flyer and we'll look for you. Um, we'll look for it and I will put it in the chat, Ms. Thomas. Thank you. Thank you, appreciate it. Anytime. I mean, if you're trying to figure out if your kid is performing, I'm pretty sure they were practicing tonight. So if your kid wasn't at practice, then I don't think your kid's in it. Oh, that's helpful. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. We, we, get, we don't get all the info from our our, our our, our kiddos when they come home so thank you that helps yeah yes i know um, there was one quick question 
from Crystal Rush. She's asking if theaters open to kindergarten students. And I, I noted in the chat that the, the, the clubs are only open at grades three through five. But uh, is kindergarten available, the, just the like um, elective, or it's not really elective, but you know what I mean, <laughs> special class. Um, is it for kindergartners too? Do you mean like the theater cluster period during the school? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, the arts are given to everybody K-5. You may not have every art offering. So, for example, we have dance, uh, visual arts, and now this year we have the theater. Uh, so you may get two out of the three. Um, most classes wouldn't get all three, if that makes sense. So you might have visual arts and dance, you may have theater and dance, you may have art and visual, you may have art and theater, uh, but you typically wouldn't have all three. Understood, thank you. You're welcome. Viviana, did you have another question related to this? No, not related to this, it had to do with the pictures, um, but it, it had to do with class pictures. I know last year we couldn't do them because they had to be at a certain distance. Would they be able to do class pictures this year or this go around they didn't say they couldn't um they said that all kids would get a class picture but i actually have not clarified that so i'll ask and let you know all um social distancing restrictions have been lifted so there's no requirement um around uh socially distancing the students so they will be able on our end school-wide uh to have class photos this year Okay, great, thank you. You're welcome, Ms. Cora. Jennifer, Jenny Tejada. Hi, good evening. Um, I would like to ask a question in terms of the dishes. Um, the Google Form seems like a really good idea, but it, I think it'll be more ideal to have like maybe like a running Google Doc where parents can see if someone has already volunteered to bring a certain dish, like so that there's not duplicates of too much of something, you know what I mean? Like it, it wouldn't make sense if five parents decided to bring in a tray of rice or like if three people already signed up to do empanadas but like maybe have a google form so that we can see what's already um been donated so that we can use that to plan if we would like to donate something else so that it's, there's like a, an abundance of a variety of items that is a great suggestion mr hava and what i'll do is i'll ask Ms. rivera to send out um something at least letting parents know so far what are like some suggestions that have made while she works on creating a document that kind of shows tracking of what people are volunteering to donate awesome. thank, you. thank you so much that's a great idea okay so my portion of the principal's report um has been kind of compacted a bit tonight because uh, we did want to be able to share with you the Title I PAC um, presentation. This presentation was previously given um, in October in conjunction with state guidelines, but we only had about two parents join and it is very important information um, and it is a, a, an opportunity for parents to contribute their voice and to be a part of the decision-making process as an entire constituency. So we wanna ensure that um, as many parents as possible are aware of what the PAC is, what the process is and um, how you can participate. So I'm going to have Ms. Ramirez, I'm gonna turn it over to our assistant principal, Ms. Ramirez, who will now lead you through a much abridged version of the Title I PAC meeting. Good evening, everyone. Sorry. Um, so I'm going to start with just talking about what Title I is. Um, Ms. Perez, I'm going to go to, we can go to the next slide and I'll stop after each slide so that you can translate. Ms. Adriana. So um, just first about what is Title I. So we are a Title I school. Um, basically, Title I, the purpose of Title I is so that all students, um, can you know will achieve so it's basically trying to make sure that every student is offered a high quality education and making sure that all students um, have improved make improvements in their academics um, and their state academic assessments as well you can go ahead miss adrina uh 
qué es el título 1? Uh, la meta del título 1 es de asegurarse que todos los niños tienen una oportunidad de tener, obtener una, educa una, alta una educación de alta calidad. Y I can't, I can't remember the word achieve, but y, uh, uh, completar uh, los, los exámenes estatal al, al, a, un, a un nivel del estándar um, que es aceptable. Thank you. So these are the key components of Title I. I kind of highlighted here on this slide, um, all of these connect in terms of um, what Title I is comprised of, but most importantly, it's about the star, the part on the, on the slide that says that we're trying to close the achievement gaps, right? So we want our students to succeed. Um, how do we do that? The, the part that's circled that says coordination of resources, this has to do with how we use our funds. Um, as a Title I school. Um, and one of the ways we use the funds is to make sure that our students have a high quality standards-based curriculum, which is aligned to the standards. Our teachers receive training, high quality teacher training and preparation. Um, and then in terms of the parents, Title I funds are also used, and you'll see this later in a later slide, for meaningful parent and family engagement education. So engagement and education. So certain, uh, we can use Title I funds for certain um, parent, um, parent, parent workshops. Um, also, maybe even if we can use Title I funds for parents to receive classes, maybe to learn English and in former slide, in, Upcoming slides, I'm going to give some additional examples of how these funds can be used. Go ahead, Ms. Adrina. If you could keep the slide up. Also, Ms. Ramirez, unfortunately, I'm going to have to drop off in like two minutes. So I'm going to translate this one and then um, I guess continue on with the with the presentation. And then if I can go back after and like do the translated version, I can, but I do have to drop off. Um, aquí le, le presentamos los componentes clave relacionado con el título uno. Um, Como ven notado aquí, uh, tiene diferentes componentes como la preparación y el entrenamiento de los maestros, uh, compartimiento de los padres, uh, educación y participación de los padres en la educación de sus estudiantes y coordina coordinación de los recursos para poder um, adquirir la meta que acabamos de mencionar anterior uh, de preparar a nuestros estudiantes para poder um, completar uh, los exámenes estatal y que tengan aprendizaje completo y de alta calidad. Thank you, Ms. Pre Ms. Adriana. Ms. Perez Hernandez, our principal, will take over with translation. Okay. Thank you so much. And I apologize. I have to go. It's okay. So um, as a Title I school, we have what's called a Title I Parent Advisory Council, which is the Title I PAC. Um, Ms. Perez is going to translate that. Um, como una escuela, tenemos un, un canciller de um, padres que avisan para el um, título uno y los fondos como se reparten um, para um, el del título uno para los padres. So um, we have a Title I Parent Advisory Council, and one of the role, the one, some of the roles of this council are um, it's supposed to be a collective of parents. So even though we have um, a PAC chairperson, the goal is to get parents such as yourself involved in making the decisions and how funding is spent, specific funding that we're going to explain um, how much the funding is in future slides. Um, but the PAC chairperson who we have is Ms. Stacey Johnson, and then we have um, Ms. Naisha Roden as her co-chair. Um, so these are the people who chair this fund, this, this um, committee, and um, they are going to be holding some meetings for parents so that they, you guys can be involved in helping to decide how the funding um, for our Title I um, set-aside set funds are going to be spent. But we definitely want to see, um, you know, one of the reasons we hold this meeting every year is so parents know that they can have a say and a voice in how specific funding is used in your child's school. So, aunque hay una junta um, del título uno, 
de padres que ahora está dirigida por la presidenta, um, Miss, la señora Stacy Johnson y la, um, la vicepresidenta, Miss Naisha Roden. Aunque ellas son las dirigentes de la junta, todos los padres de nuestra escuela pueden participar en la junta y pueden um, dar su opinión y sugestiones um, para las decisiones que se toma en la junta. Okay, you can go to the next slide. So this just explains the role of um, Ms. Stacey Johnson as a P Title I PAC chairperson. She also sits um, on the SLT. Um, and then she also helps to represent parents such as yourself during the SLT meetings. Um, and then the, the information she gathers from the meetings, she's able to share with you at the parent committees. Um, and then, you know, she also consults with you, um, the parents that come to the meetings on how, um, you know, on opportunities for how, and ideas for how this funding can be, can be spent. Esta imagen demuestra uh, el trabajo de la presidenta, la señora Stacy Johnson, como presidenta de la Junta de Padres uh, del Título 1. Ella básicamente toma sus ideas y ella los representa en el SLT, que es um, el, el, la Junta de Liderazgo Escolar, a donde se toman decisiones uh, sobre la escuela. Ella representa sus ideas en, ese, um, en esa junta y luego ella trae las ideas de que se discuten en esa junta y lo trae de nuevo a las citas de, de la junta de título 1 para los padres. Ella les puede dar ideas de cómo los fondos de título 1 se pueden utilizar um, y qué los padres pueden hacer con um, esos fondos. Y entonces luego ella trae sus ideas a nuestro uh, equipo para ver cuáles decisiones los padres están tomando para apoyar uh, las necesidades de la escuela y los padres de la escuela. So this just this slide just explains who our Title One PAC is this school year, Ms. Stacy Johnson and her co-chair, Ms. Naisha Roden. Y de nuevo estas son uh, sus precis, um, perdóname, <laughs> son sus representantes. Eh, del título 1 de la junta de título 1 la presidenta de nuevos la señora Stacy Johnson y la vicepresidenta la señora Naisha Rode. So this you might ask yourself, you know, well how much money um, are we going to be talking about or um, you know what is the what is the amount of funding that the Title 1 PAC chair um, PAC committee um, can you know has to decide with how they're going to use. So if you see on the this slide, um, like I said before, we are a Title I school. Um, all Title I schools have to set aside a minimum of 1% of our total Title I allocation. So this school year, um, we are considered what's called a school-wide program with Title I. So our funding, our overall funding for Title I is $383,655. Um, we also have carryover money from last year that was not used. So we have a total of $341. So the total between you know um, both of these, I'm sorry, it's not 300, <laughs> it, it, and the total Title I set aside funds is $3,836.55 because it's 1% of this big, um, 383,000 plus the amount that was set aside from last year. So the total amount for this school year that the Title I um, PAC has to decide and has to involve parents in helping to decide how they're gonna spend is $4,178.55. So, nuestra um, escuela tiene en completo los fondos de título 1. Son tres, 383 mil, básicamente. Y de, ese, de esa cantidad de dinero, un por ciento de eso 
um, es lo que la Junta de Título 1 de los padres um, tiene para utilizar. So, un por ciento de eso sería 3,836 y más unos fondos que no se utilizaron el año pasado de 341, que sale a una suma de 4,178 con 55 centavos. Esa es la cantidad de dinero que um, la Junta y nuestros padres um, tienen para utilizar como ellos creen que um, sería mejor. Siempre, con las, siempre siguiendo las reglas de cómo se puede utilizar esos fondos. Um, so with this amount of money, there's specific guidelines for how the money can be spent. So if you see on the left, there's some examples of some, some items that you know, the, the committee could decide they want to spend the money on. Um, so for example, um, family literacy programs, Um, maybe they have might be a program for the parents on how to work with your child's teacher using technology, um, internet safety, bullying, nutrition or health, college and career readiness, um, maybe teacher parent mentoring programs, um, creating a school parent newsletter, handbook or website. Um, and then there's additional programs on the side. Um, other ideas could be partnering with New York City Cultural institutions, um, in-person or virtual joint staff parent professional development seminars, um, what would be like the cost of the materials and the presenters, um, reimbursement to parents for reasonable transportation, for metro cards, um, reasonable exp expenditures for light refreshments um, during in-person parent involvement activities. So these are just some examples of how the money could potentially be spent. So la lista que ahora está presentado en la pantalla son varios, ma varias maneras en que los fondos se pueden utilizar. Por ejemplo, um, reuniones para los padres para hablar o, o demostrar sobre los estándares, um, tener más apoyo um, con el currículo que los niños usan, um, también uh, para tener experiencias con instituciones culturales, a presentadores que pueden venir a la escuela, dar más información sobre varios tópicos que son aplicables para um, nuestros padres um, en la escuela. So estos son básicamente algunas uh, maneras en cómo se puede utilizar um, esos fondos, uh, pero no es una lista e inclusiva de todos. ¿no? So por eso es que uno trata y, y platica sobre sus ideas. Um, para que así se puede utilizar en la manera que ustedes creen que sería más, um, sería mejor para nuestros padres. Um, so the, there's an, some additional examples, like um, maybe having a parent workshop about understanding your child's individual education plan, um, how parents can keep their, safe, their children safe using social media, maybe adult ESL classes, teaching adults how to, you know, helping the adults learn how to speak English, um, or maybe even shifting money into per session, which is um, specific funding that would go um, to pay for staff members um, to put a posting up for um, student tutoring or um, additional translation services. De nuevo, aquí tenemos más um, opciones que se puede hacer con esos fondos. Podemos uh, tener ta talleres sobre cómo entender el plan individual de, um, de nuestros niños que tienen educación especial. Uh, también podemos utilizar los fondos para ofrecer cursos de ingle inglés como segundo idioma para nuestros padres. Um, y también se puede uh, utilizar el dinero para pagar um, el sueldo de un maestro que va a servir como tutor um, para los estudiantes después de la escuela. Um, and then, of course, there's just uh, specific things that you cannot, we're not, you're not allowed to use this money for. Um, essentially, it has to, the Title I funding has to do with um, They have to be activities that directly relate to the title education program or provide an opportunity um, to turn key professional development content to Title I parents. Um, they will not be allowed. Um, anything that's not 
has an does not have an intrinsic educational value it will not be allowed like trips to an amusement park visits to shopping centers um, even theatrical performances such as plays um, payments to non doe approved consultants or providers um, incentives that do not relate to the title one education program so they have to directly relate to this um, the the academic education program um, they can't go towards staff salaries or refreshments for regularly scheduled meetings, such as if the PSA meetings are going to be now hybrid, um, SLT um, payments for people that are uh, members of the SLT. Um, so those are just some examples of stipulation for why, of why specific um, things that the funding can't be used for. La lista um, que está presente ahora es sobre actividades que no se permita utilizar los fondos uh, para tener. So, por ejemplo, no se puede utiliz utilizar los fondos para um, actividades que no tienen un propósito edu educativo o cultural. También no se puede um, utilizar el dinero, por ejemplo, para comprar um, material como camisas o, o vasos. No se puede utilizar para bailes en la escuela y no se puede utilizar um, para pagar uh, vendedores que no son aprobados por el Departamento de, de Educación. So, esto es una lista de cosas que no se puede hacer con esos fondos. So once, um, one of the things that Ms. Johnson wanted to mention at our meeting was um, Right now, she has this list of parent representatives from classes from parents that have volunteered to be um, that want to want to support the school. Um, but she was kind of had this chart here to show which classes she's missing parent representation from. Um, essentially, you can contact um, Stacy Johnson at the email address that's there if you're interested in um, volunteering for your class. Um, she's trying to get kind of a representative from each class, from a parent from each class to help um, have more parent voice in this decision with how they will spend this money. And we'll be using this. So, uh, esta lista um, es una lista que la presidenta, la señora Stacy Johnson, compuso para demostrar todas las clases que tienen un, un, representa, un representante de padres. Um, y ella cree que esta es una manera en que se puede oír más voces de nuestros padres en cómo utilizar uh, los fondos. And the, the PSA will also be. Um, and then the next couple of slides, I'm just going to um, go over briefly. Essentially, once the, the decision is made with the um, with the committee, when it, the decision is made for how this money will be spent, um, there is a specific form that needs to be filled out and sent in. Um, and all of this money needs to be itemized and explained um, what the activity was, um, description of the cost, what was the category, and the specific amount, um, because all of the money has to be um, has to be explained and accounted for and itemized so that um, it's clear to the DOE that the money was spent um, the correct way. Um. Esta pantalla demuestra la manera en que uh, las decisiones se documentan después de que los fondos um, están decididos cómo, cómo utilizarlos. Hay que indicar um, cada actividad y um, describirlo detalla, en detalle um, y dar uh, razón de cómo se fue utilizado para esa actividad. So, toda um, esta información tiene que ser documentada porque si sí es, uh, son fondos que el Estado sí verifica. So, um, that concludes the, you know, the bridge version of the Title I uh, parent meeting. But at this point, if you have any questions specific to um, Title I funds or, you know, when the, the meetings will be held, please make sure that you reach out to Ms. Stacey Johnson, um, who's the Title I PAC. Um, and if you have any questions for us in regards to um, Title I, we're happy to answer them. And then also I know there might be some additional questions you have um, for administration that's here on the, this meeting. 
si tienen alguna pregunta sobre los fondos o la presentación sobre la Junta de, de Padres de, del Título 1 o cómo se utilizan los fondos, pueden comunicarse con la presidenta Stacy Johnson. O también si tiene alguna pregunta, se los puede hacer a nosotros también. Yeah, hi. Okay. I have, yeah, um, I have a question. Any specific questions related to Title One PAC? Um, you mm -hmm. could unmute yourself, or if you want, you could type it into the chat. Yes, I don't know if anybody can hear me. I have a question. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Ah, okay. Thank you. Um, I have a question regarding so um, you know, some some potential. You know, I heard that Asphalt Green School was you know something that may happen i'm not sure if it happened in the past but is it something that the title one qualify for to fund um so that is, we we actually have asphalt green currently in our school oh, okay. okay yeah um it's during it's a recess enhancement so that they come four days a week um but we could find out um you know sort of we can inquire about whether or not the payment for them in the future could be paid through this funding. Um, I'm just based on, you know, we would have to basically, they are, they are a DOE provider. So, and we are a title one school. So it is a possibility that the money can be, we are, we currently do have them this year though, um, working with our students. Okay, thank you. I see Melissa Melendez has her hand up. Hi. Good evening. Okay, you can hear me. Great. Mm -hmm. I um what I it's a comment and a question. Mm -hmm. So I've noticed that a lot of the stuff that the Title I funds can be used for are already workshops that you already implement in the school. Mm -hmm. So do they go for that or is that additional or oh, that's already school funds that you guys are using for those workshops? So, um, yeah, so I understand what you're saying because we do have a, we do have parent workshops that are currently having, that we're, we currently have with our staff members. Um, a lot of our staff members hold workshops. I know um, moving, like I did workshop um, on math and then I know that we're gonna be having some upcoming parent workshops. Um, the funding can be used for, you know, I guess, you know, those those things, but we I think the idea with this is like if there's an additional uh parent can parent the parents decide that there's something in need that we're not currently offering, then that can be voted on and then the funding can go towards, you know, the payment of even if it was like an outside consultant or um, you know, if the parents want like English, you know, maybe English classes. Um so I hope that answered your question. I don't know if it did, Miss Melissa. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so I had another um, idea, but I don't know if the Title I funds can be used for it because there is a program, since you guys are starting a theater program, there's like Broadway stages or something that they offer discount Broadway tickets to schools to their um, student and parent body. So I don't know if that's something that like the theater teacher could look into and be able to offer. And it's not really to use the Title I funds, but that you know the parents can take the children to Broadway shows and get it at a discount. Oh, but not utilizing the Title I funds. Yeah, not utilizing the Title I funds. Oh. Making the connection with the group and maybe it's it's uh, something to explore for the school and the parents and the students. Because I recently took my son to a, a Broadway show and he loved it. So like he wants to go to more. So if there's a way to get it at a lower price. <laughs> what was the like when you guys did the Met game. Oh yeah, what was the name of the organization? I'm sorry. Um, I gotta check again because I'm not too sure, but I think it was Broadway Stages, but that could be like a set company also. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so let me like let me check back to make sure because it was my daughter's um high school and she's in college now. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah. 
I'll get the exact name of the program. Sure, and we can look into it as well. Yes. Um, and these are good ideas. So like, that's why, the, you know, Ms. Johnson will be having a meeting um, and anything that we're not currently offering, we're open to, you know, you guys should brainstorm ideas and then she can bring this information um, and check with, you know, um, to make sure what is what is allowed and what we can't, you know, what we can't provide. But even if something, Ms. Melendez, like going back to your point that maybe Broadway stages may not qualify for that, just because it's not allowed, the brainstorming process is still really important because you may come up with a great idea that through the school we could do it separate from the Title I um, parent allocation funding. So it just gives brings more ideas even to the school that we could, you know, just enhance more mm -hmm. of what we're offering. There could be more opportunities for our students and that's the whole idea. Oh, and I saw she put in TDF um, eligibility requirements. Okay, we can look into that. That seems to be an organization that provides discounted tickets for schools. I don't know if it's the same one, but there's probably a few out there. We can also look into stuff like that with the PSA too. I see uh, someone asked if they if we'd have culture pass at PS376. Culture Pass, I believe, is accessible to all public school um, students and families. Mm. I don't think it's like exclusive just to even Title I schools. So I'm not sure. I, we had it when at the place James went to 3K, but uh, they gave us the card. Like they, mm. it was all through the school. It wasn't like you could just sign up for it. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Exactly. That, that needs to come from the school. I can have Ms. Rivera um, look into that because my understanding is that that's open to all. Yeah, and it's awesome. It's an awesome card because you get you know access to all the museum, even zoos for free, and not just you, uh, not just your kid, but the whole family. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, I didn't even know that they were still actually doing the cultural pass. I heard about it like. Oh, yeah. it looks yeah. like it's through the public library now. So if you sign up for a library card you can sign up for Culture Pass. It used to be like more through the school, but I think now it's the library. It's, well, it's to bribe people to get library cards. <laughs> well, it depends. I mean, we had the card until this October provided from our school last year. Hmm. So unless we just changed it for this school year, it should be the same system than previously. We'll definitely have Ms. Rivera look into that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We are also an urban advantage school, um, and that's something that Ms. Souchley, um applies for every year. She's our she's our environmental science teacher, and with the urban advantage, we get passes um, that we can distribute to to families that help them get into science institutions, so or museums, so. Um, like it could be the Natural Museum of Natural History, or it could be a zoo, the zoo. Um, there's specific um, specific um, indicators of which which institutions it allows, but it is a family pass. So it's not just for the student and their parents. It can be the a family, I think, up to a family of four. So um, we'll follow up with Miss um, Salchley because typically we give those out during the school year. Yes, she was asking about we're going to do more of those trips. Hopefully, um, we'll we'll be organizing that. Um, maybe if it's going to the zoo or something out outside, it'll be more towards the springtime when this the the weather is nicer. But um, definitely, that was a big hit last year. We took the the families on a Saturday to the Bronx Zoo, and I believe they had a really good time. Any other questions from parents related to the Title One pack, or maybe additional um, questions? Because we saw um, earlier in the chat, maybe there were some questions parents had. You know what I was thinking of? Not culture pass, cool culture. That was the thing that was given by the school. Just bring that out there. Uh, price laws, but we could look into that too. So that's cool culture. Yeah, we haven't heard of that one, but we're gonna look into it. <laughs> sorry, sorry to, to go on a tangent. <laughs> I was curious. 
any additional questions or concerns about anything that wasn't brought up during Title One PAC or questions that you'd like to, um, you know, ask administration? I did see someone earlier mention something about recess, uh, recess and physical activities at the school. Yeah, that was yes. Hi, that was me. I mean, we had we had some ongoing, you know, in background conversation with other 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 uh, people from our classroom about recess, and we just want to understand how that works at school. Okay. Yes. yes. So we um at our last meeting, at our October meeting, there were some concerns brought up around recess. And I was a little bit taken back because since last year, this had been an ongoing um, issue and we had put certain steps in place to ensure that kids were getting recess every day. And administration is in the cafeteria during the lunch periods and we were seeing the kids go out for recess. So we weren't really clear how so many parents across so many grades um, we're still saying it was a problem. So after our last meeting, I kind of just went in there and like just watched for like movement with recess. And we did notice that the way students were broken up in the cafeteria, you have two grades that are in there. There was constantly a flow of children going out to recess, but you really couldn't track who was going out when because uh, you had the grades mixed up at each section of the cafeteria. So it was super possible that some, some classes weren't going out every single day, you couldn't track it. So what we did is we restructured the whole lunch period. Um, each grade is sitting separately with each other on opposite ends of the cafeteria. So that one grade now we can assure and keep track of is immediately going out when they first come into the cafeteria and they're starting off their period with recess while the other grade is eating in the cafeteria. Then there's a designated marker in the middle of the period where we swap and the students that were outside for recess come in and eat lunch and the grade that was inside then gets to transition outside for recess. Um, like I said, we do have administration present in the cafeteria. so that issue should have been resolved and the students are like now we can track that every grade is going out every day unless it rains um and it may not still be raining sometimes it rains in the morning it clears up however we have dips in our yard and then there are large puddles throughout the the yard and it becomes a safety issue those are the only two times inclement weather or um residual over or residual effects due to the inclement weather when the students are not going out. But I we do touch base, um, the three administrators, because everyone is at a different lunch period to ensure that the swap um, did happen. And school aides know that recess cannot be suspended unless an administrator um, approves the suspension of, of recess. With, I see Ms. Thomas put in the fact about winter weather. Um, coats are required for the students to go out. We have found that over the last few days, that first lunch period, sometimes the kids are coming down forgetting to bring their coats down. And we're finding that we've had to make announcements for the subsequent lunch periods to ensure to come down with their coats. Um, we are adding it to our week at a glance so that uh, teachers receive that the week before. So the following week, so that they're reminded to make sure that they make the announcement and that all students are able to go out. We have a 50 minute lunch block. So students have to be able to have recess and eat during that lunch block. So the um, it's about 20 minutes recess, 20 minutes eating uh, when you factor in tran transition time. But we set a marker at the middle of the period. So I think for the first lunch period, the middle marker is 1015. Um, for the fourth lunch period, it's 1115. Uh, and for the fifth lunch period, I believe it's 12. Um, so they get about 20 minutes to eat, 20 minutes outside for recess. We don't force anyone outside for recess. 
many times a lot of kids stay back. We will remind them because we know we're hearing from parents, you know, we want the children outside for recess. But, you know, if I ask a child like, oh, well, you're not outside for recess. And they're like, no, I don't want to go outside. I'm not going to force them to, to go outside. Um, some students want to take longer to have their lunch. That's fine. They're able to stay inside um, and continue having their lunch or socialize with their friends. No one's forced to stay inside or forced to go outside. It's up to their discretion. Um, and I see like, do the TVs have to be on during lunch? We typically put it on just for engagement purposes and it has like educational showing um, on the TV, but they don't have to. I mean, I don't think most of the students, pretty much when I'm in the cafeteria, I see most of the kids talking to their classmates um, and engaged in conversation or running to go off outside um, for recess, so. They don't always have educational shows on them and I mean honestly I also <laughs> I don't know if we can like vote on that somehow like I don't think that it's necessary to have the TVs on especially because then yeah they are talking to their friends why well, have this screen like you know flickering in your face um yeah I mean the TVs are all the way at the top pretty much of the ceiling and at the very front of the cafeteria um or to the sides but we really don't have to have them on. I can't say that many students even really watch it. So it, to me, it makes no difference if it's on or, or not. Yeah, it just feels like noise, you know, like just- There's no volume. Well, I mean, no visual noise, <laughs> just like a- Oh, uh, visual noise? It feels like chaotic, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's it. How long is lunchtime and how long is re recess outdoors? So I said the full block of time is 50 minutes. We partition it in the middle. So it's about 20 minutes for students to eat, 20 minutes for recess. And how do they know that they have to rotate? Oh, we make an announcement. So we'll like announce, okay, it's time for recess. And then the students kind of swap over. Okay. We bring the other students in and our students that are in the cafeteria are escorted out. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, so going back to green asphalt, sorry, I'm, I'm very intrigued by that because you did mention that they are in the school already for recess. Yes. So asphalt green is um, a recess access program. And what it pretty much does is, um, it, it introduces formalized play to students. So most of us growing up remember um, kind of playing like red light, green light, one, two, three, hopscotch, these like organized play activities. And that's what Asphalt Green does. It just like reintroduces these um, time, you know, tested games that we all played in groups growing up. And it's supervised by an Asphalt Green rep coordinator. Um, and part of the program is also demonstrating effective play to the adults that help supervise recess. So uh, by participating, our school leads are also learning how to structure formalized play and um, engage the students in formalized play. We don't force the students to participate. Like if they're engaged in um, a game of, of, I don't know, um, catch, whatever it is that they're doing out for asphalt green that day, we don't force them to engage in that. If students want to be outside for recess, but want to like, you know, walk around the track or want to do something else outside, they are allowed to do that as well. But there is a structured play activity taking place with the asphalt green rep. And does it mean they are coming for every recess and for every grade? They're there for, every, when they come on the days that they come, they are there for every grade, all three lunch periods. Okay. And they're not there every day. I, do we have them three days a week? Four days. Four, four days a week, oh, it's almost every day. But four days a week there, they come to our school. There was a question in the chat about um, the late policy. Can you just briefly review that um, since we are approaching the eight o'clock mark? Um, sure. No, I can. Okay, yeah, I'll take it. Um, so our school day, instructional school day, starts at eight a.m. Um, 
technically we give students a few minutes grace period, but about 810, they're considered late at that point. Um, we give the students a late pass when they come in late so that they could give it to the teacher and it gets marked off as late. If the teacher takes attendance and the student is not in the classroom um, and it's past 810, they have to mark the student as absent because they can't assume, right, that the student is coming in late. There is a process where the following day on the attendance sheet, there's a second column. And that is what we call the attendance correction column. So if you marked a student the day before as absent and they really came in late, that's when you're supposed to fix it on your attendance scantron sheet um, in that second column. And then it's supposed to fix itself in ATS. Two things happen. Sometimes you know a teacher may forget. Um, the child may have had a cluster specialist the first period and the teacher didn't realize that they were marked absent instead of late. Um, so sometimes that doesn't happen and that's where you may end up with a discrepancy in um, attendance. We typically clear that up by reminding the teacher, oh, you have to make sure that you fill out the correction um, column if students came in late versus being absent. And we can always manually go in and make any changes if there was an issue and your child was marked absent, but they were um, late. So those can always be corrected on ATS. You would just have to notify us in the main office and we would have to confirm, you know, that the child actually was in attendance that day. Um, but that's typically what the process is. We do go over attendance with teachers, but things sometimes happen during the day and sometimes it's just a, a minor oversight. Um, and that's how that kind of issue can happen. Did that answer your question, Ms. Cortez? Yes, it did. Moving forward, do you think, you know, it'll be, did you remind the teachers of that you said? So what, I, yeah. A part of it. So if, for example, like if it's a parent that notifies us and it's not like a lot of parents that had that issue, we would just directly speak to the teacher. Um, but one thing that we did uh, is we added it to the week at a glance that I said we would kind of remind teachers to make sure the kids come down with their coats. Um, we're also adding on there, like, make sure that you're checking your attendance from the day before and filling out the correction column if need be. So that they see it every week on their week at a glance, and they're reminded um, to continuously do that to try okay. to avoid um, any of that. I have one last question. Thank you so much. Um, for GNT um, children, is like, how is the process different compared to before? Because I know they don't take tests and stuff like that, but how are the new children picked like based off of what? So I can tell you the process that was laid out this year, which was different than the process from the year before, which was different from the process the year before. Um, this, for this school year that we're currently in, last spring, teachers were able to submit um, a referral form suggesting or recommending a child for gifted and talented um, instruction. The parents were supposed to go in and fill out a survey saying that they wanted their child to be a part of the gifted and talented program. What we were informed of is that all of those applications and referrals were sent to central and at the central DOE level, they looked at the student's STARS record and selected the top 10%. And that's how the seats in GNT classes were filled. But the schools did not have any, um, any part of that process other than if a teacher felt that a student would be a good candidate for GNT filling out that referral form. We didn't make any of the selections. Um, we didn't receive anything asking us to verify uh, if the students grades did fall in the top 10%. That was something that Central looked at based on what they said were all of the stars um, information across the city, which is like the report card grades. Does that answer your question? Yes. So do, do you guys make sure like if the like any of the new kids or people in general, like, you know, if they're I guess if they fit within the GNT class codes, like, does anyone follow up with that? Or it's just like they're there and they're going to be there and that's it? 
So right now, um, this was a totally new process this year, right? So we're kind of learning as we go along what the impact of that process has been, what the DOE is going to do moving forward. I'm not 100% sure. I know that at school sites, if schools feel that a student is struggling and maybe it's not the best placement for them, typically those GNT sites are able to have a conversation with the parents and together, like you, of course, first you try to work on, you know, whatever the struggle may be, try to close the gaps, um, try to help the student adjust. Um, but then sometimes if both feel that it's not in the best interest of the child to be in that setting, you know, we could then talk about, you know, is there a better setting in the building? Maybe moving back to a GNT classroom, um, they would thrive and, and do better, right? Just because you're not in a GNT class does not mean that you're not gifted um, and does not mean that you're not achieving at, at high levels either, right? We have students in our regular general ed classes that are performing just as well um, as our students in GNT. So it's really about the setting of the program and is that the right setting? Is that where this child is thriving? So it's very much a one-on-one -on -one conversation um, and parents are a part of, of that conversation as well. It's not, it's not something where we could just make an arbitrary decision. We really have to look at all of the factors and parameters around it. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, we are two minutes, one minute away from eight o'clock. So if there are no additional um, questions, um, I think it, the time has come for us to wrap up our meeting. Thank you so much to Ms. Uh, Perez Fernandez and Ms. Ramirez for joining our meeting and for all of you for hanging in here um, for almost a solid two hours. Um, please, please, please consider coming to the fundraising meeting on Tuesday. We absolutely promise it'll be shorter. And um, remember, we're going to put the fun in fundraising because it's mostly about the fun. Um, and with that, everyone have a good night. And I just wanted to say, if you do have a personal issue that you need to discuss, I noticed there were some comments in the chat. You you are fully welcome to contact Ms. Perez Hernandez or any of the admin team directly. Um, and you can set up a time to talk to them during the school day. Um, you know, you don't have to hold, hold it all in for this meeting. Um, it's really better to address it earlier on. Um, and if you need their email addresses, you don't have them, you can email us at PSA at PS376.com. It's very simple and uh, we can we can connect you. Our email addresses are also on the school website, along with um, Ms. Rivera, our parent coordinator. So when in doubt, you can always go to the school website, too. Perfect. All right. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you so much. And thank you for your time, Ms. Perez and Ms. Ramirez and Ms. Ms. Haig, I see you there. You weren't talking, but you're there. <laughs> it's our pleasure. <laughs>